Hi, and welcome to the latest episode of our Connect Next series. Uh, my name is Corey with First Line Technology, and today we're going to take you through a little video we shot uh, that's to answer the, the question that's been asked a lot, which is how First Line recommends the use of our enhanced decon system, or EDS. Now, obviously, your own agency has SOPs, and the use of this system varies depending if you're a state and local hazmat team or using it in military operations. So we've uh, just put together a little scenario, a little video, and what we'll do is we'll let it run through for the first person to be decon, just so you can see what's going on. Uh, and then I'll narrate the second uh, person to be deconned so that we can kind of talk through some of the issues and some of the little details uh, that you might see in here. And what this scenario is, is this is at our new training facility down in Fredericksburg, Virginia. We have a couple of little scenarios set up here and they're going in for a clandestine lab inside of this camper van RV. They're gonna do a basic, just spray down decontamination with electrostatic sprayer, then come out and be decontaminated just as a small team would through our EDS-6. So the first thing we have to do, obviously, is set up our decon line, set up our EDS. You can see this time lapse here. We'll just show you, it's really quick. One or two people can set this up in a few minutes. Hotline goes down first, then we put down our shuffle pits, put down our fiber tech, snap it into the shuffle pits, and then comes all of our sprayers, cutting tools, plastic bags, everything else that you need to accomplish a decon line that's included in this kit. Turn around, face me. Hand the other like this. Watch your hands. Nice turn face that way. Your arm up. Nice turn face away from me. Then buckle your SCBA and sling it on your left shoulder. Bring your SCBA to the front, hold it. There you go, that works better. Hey, get on the strap. Alright, turn face to your right. Lift one arm. Okay. Alright, turn one face away from me one more time. Lift one foot, keep your toe on the ground. Alright, 
So the one thing that I want to point out here is that obviously we would recommend that the decontamination line be staffed by two decontamination operators. That would be a, a clean operator and a dirty pit operator. Uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, we were working with a small team. So we've got that dirty operator bouncing between both roles. But again, in a real world situation, we would want two people staffing this decon line. The technician to be decontaminated is going to step into the first or dirty pit. He's going to take all instructions from the decon operator. Decon operator is going to do a quick once over. He's just looking for gross contamination, anything visible, anything bulk to be addressed immediately. Not seeing any of that, he's going to tear open a FiberTech mitt and use that to address kind of our high contact points. Those are going to be the mask around the mask seal, the interface between the suit uh, and the mask. Also the hands, this is, these are those high touch points. This is where a lot of contamination could be present. And also we're going to address the SCBA and the air pack. Because the air pack kind of sticks off the back of the body, a lot of times it can be dragged along a wall or, or into the ceiling, even if you're crawling through a building, and you're not aware that that area has been contaminated as the person in the suit. We're also gonna focus on the uh, suit seam, and this could either be if we're gonna doff, in this case we're gonna doff, we're gonna uh, address our seam. This could also be cut out lines if we're gonna cut out of the suits. And then the technician is going to clean the bottoms of his boots by shuffling in the shuffle pit. Now for this second technician, we switched over to the decon keg, a good pressurized sprayer. You can also use an electrostatic sprayer for this purpose. Um, you know, the, the decon can be accomplished with the included uh, tactical sprayers that are in the EDS kit. But if you 
want to add on a pressure sprayer like the decon keg or an electrostatic sprayer, it really just makes things go much faster and much more efficiently. So we're making sure, because we have a nicer sprayer here, we're making sure that we are getting full coverage. Um, and that's just 100%, 360 degrees coverage. Making sure that I focus on the hands again, the bottom of the feet. Make sure that I get under the arms, the top of the shoulders, the top of the head. Also under the air pack itself. Um, you know, this is blocked, but from, from you know, gross contamination a lot because the air pack is against the uh, outside of the suit. But we want to focus on that just so we're not missing anything that might be hiding behind that air pack. And of course the air pack itself, we wanna make sure that that tank is getting full, fully covered. One note, if you're using a fiberglass cylinder, uh, an electrostatic, you need to make sure that you add a little bit more on there because that fiber, fiberglass material is non-conductive uh, and doesn't really attract the particles of the spray the same way it normally would uh, an electrostatic sprayer. So after our dwell time, has passed for whatever our threat is. You know, this is anywhere from a few seconds all the way up to 15 minutes for the for things like VX. We're gonna repeat that first process of blotting and wiping with the FiberTech mitt. Again, focusing on the mask visor, focusing around the mask, that seam. We're gonna get the hands as well, both sides of the hands. We're gonna focus on the suit cutout or doffing lines, and we're also gonna have the technician shuffle his feet again in the shuffle pit. Very important that after these wipes are used or anything comes off of the technician that everything goes immediately into a bag. Um, so here we're gonna cut out the boots. We're gonna, we like to leave the boots in the dirty pit so that the technician is gonna step directly out of the dirty pit into the clean pit inside of his booties. And the boots will go directly into a bag to prevent cross contamination. We're using the provided S cutter here. These work really, really well for cutting out of PPE. All right, so now we're gonna move into the doffing process. Um, something not included in the kit that you might wanna add on to your team's um, pack is somewhere, you know, a, a chair or a wooden cross tee, somewhere for the technician to actually put and hang his SCBA pack. You know, it certainly can be done just by holding the pack or setting it on the ground like we're doing here. Just makes it a little bit easier if you have somewhere to set that pack. Um, here, you know, we, we forgot to remove the outer gloves. We would prefer to have those outer gloves removed in the first pit, but, you know, we don't want to work back in a decon line, so we just address those issues as they come up. And at this point, um, to get the rest of the suit off, we're going to take him off air. He's going to fairly quickly get that suit rolled down and step out of the suit. And he's going to step out of the suit onto that third 24 by 24 shuffle pit or uh, 24 by 24 fiber tech pad. And that's just a clean surface to sand. And that's where he can do his uh, mask removal. And then he's going to step across the green line, step across the cold line, and he's done with decontamination. The operator is then going to bag everything up. Everything gets split up into if a suit is going to be uh, washed and reused, SCBA, Masks, obviously these are gonna be washed and reused, but then any disposable items, over boots that are disposable, gloves, things like that, will get put in a separate bag for disposals has waste. So thank you for joining us today. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Training at firstlinetech.com is the best way. If you have any questions, any concerns, any thoughts, any constructive criticism, we're more than happy to see it. So thank you and until next time.